Welcome to the SCOM podcast. This is our security and compliance podcast created by Quarter Cloud. I'm Kelly and I work at the marketing department. And I'm Phil from the technical team. And we're going to take you through all our technology in a really interesting way. Phil Talk Technical, where I keep it lighthearted with a selection of exciting guest speakers. Let's delve in. In this episode, we are really delighted that Shaq from Pantera is returning to be on the podcast, but this time we're not in the castle. We are in a different location just to mix it up. Shaq will be discussing why automating security is really important. Not only that, we're going to be talking about attack surface and how Pantera is evolving to support anyone that's trying to make sure that they're looking after the inside of their business and the outside. Welcome, Shaq, back to the podcast room. Although we're not in the podcast room, we've had a very fun day. So we've got a virtual head of Phil because we're not in the castle. We are in a local um, media room because we've been doing lots of filming with shack that hopefully or is or isn't out on social media yet we don't know uh depending on when the podcast comes live so thank you shack for spending the day with us thank as you. always this is gonna be a quick roundup podcast really we spoke to you i think it was back in april yeah it was, think, a, it was a while ago wasn't it last yeah, year yeah yeah it's gone really fast i think i just come back from mat leave so a bit of a roundup because it's been quite a lot that's happened with pentera yeah. especially in the last kind of three to four months yeah. could you bring the listeners up to speed of what's new in Pantera world. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, certainly, there's been a lot of changes. So um, I would say the sort of the biggest thing for us this year um, has been around the expansion of that attack surface. Um, so we have now our surface capability, which allows us to be able to look at things from the outside. What does it look like for an attacker from the outside? We, we always did really well with looking at the inside of the network and um, looking at assuming some level of breach, right? What happens when an attacker's inside your network? Where are the security gaps? What are the things that you need to prioritize and fix? And we've kind of replicated all of that and taken it to the external side. So now we can sit on the outside and do that similar sort of reconnaissance discovery, um, build up a picture of um, what that looks like. And sometimes just from a visibility point, a lot of our, you know, we've started on that journey now with a lot of customers um, and with you guys and, and Phil that's on the call here as well today um, in showing people what we can see as an attacker. And I think that's what you know what's always been unique for us. So we're looking at that attacker sort of perspective of what would I go after? Um, it could be uh, related to a vulnerability. It could be related to an open port. Um, but then we can go into the realms of applications. So we have a login page. Mm-hmm. What does that represent to an attacker? Um, out of interest can I do some sort of SQL injection or cross-site scripting Um, so yeah I think you you know when we talk about doing security validation now for us it's about what we call total security validation in that we can look at the internal and the external that's kind of been the big thing for us um, this year Um, but you know continuing to build on new attack vectors um, that's an ongoing thing for us always we're we're looking at new interesting attack vectors that we see in the news Um, off the back of last year we had um, log for shell so Mm -hmm. that was you know that was very um, sort of popular in the news as uh, you know something that affected everybody affected all sorts of systems inside and outside of the network Um, so you know a really good place for us to be able to help customers validate against that vulnerability um, to show where it can be exploited Um, and that's an ongoing journey right Um, we're looking at helping customers with that sort of continuous improvement program but we're also you know developing new techniques or coming up with I guess new things that that we can test against um, based on that changing threat landscape. Okay Phil could you Quickly, for some for someone that might be listening that may be more like from me from the marketing background, attack surface is quite a new word coming out. What what would be within your attack surface? What things are is it looking at? Is it like the website? Um, is it that sort of thing? What does attack surface really mean to a customer? Yeah, it's, it's going to be a website. Everything's internet facing. They're kind of looking at. Um, I think it's the way that they're approaching that that's really kind of key. Um, in that, when you look in the console. They're sorting that by attractive Mr. Attacker, which again, Pantera is always about prioritizing, I guess, and you know, what do you do first? Because you know, the more information you get, the more you're trying to work out what to do first. So they show that with the attractive Mr. Attacker, and also typical Pantera, um, that when you find something, you can actually add that into your next scan and actually test against it. So it's not just saying 
you know, you're vulnerable to this. It's actually going to run a test against it, so you can provision that uh, and test against it. So it's been really good. We've had really positive comments. As, as Shaq said, we've run some POVs. Um, we're getting really good feedback from customers. Again, it's, it's very early days with it, but really, really positive. Uh, and I think it really does add value to people because, you know, as with Pentera, you know, you really get a good feel of what the inside of your infrastructure is like to be able to see, you know, what the attack is seen from the outside. You know, you want something that's really going to show you what you need to actually really be working on. And again, that's, that's what it's done, especially with, you know, Log4j and the like and all the different vulnerabilities externally. Okay. So following on from that, we know like quite a key theme for every podcast we do is that security teams are already overstretched. Some people might be listening to this and be like, oh God, this is another platform or another yeah. tech that I've got to plug in, which we know has come up time and time again. Yeah. To relieve that worry, how is Pentera actually helping and supporting small teams and constraints yeah. and budgets and things like that? How how would this new Surface support that and help them? Yeah, um, and it's a continuation of a theme, you know, for us in the, um, the ability for us to scale um, is always important. Um, taking some of that manual effort out, it applies to Surface as much as the uh, internal um, space. Um, so ultimately... You, you know, we're looking at a lot of the work is done for you already. When, when we look at Surface, we're doing that reconnaissance, we're doing that discovery, we're building up a picture of what your assets look like, giving you a breakdown of those assets. Um, and as Phil mentioned, that attractiveness score, right? What's going to be attractive to an attacker and helping you sort of prioritize those things uh, and giving you that information. So I think it becomes a valuable data information and, and visibility that really helps those teams to to focus on the things that are really important, okay. right? And you know, in that sense, I think even with small teams, um, as we, we've always seen with Pentera, there's a lot, 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 little effort um, involved in um, you, you know working with the platform. But we give them a lot in terms of um, the findings, the results, and, and the things that they need to to really worry about. And I'm, am I right in thinking, film that these give them in? The actual remediation reports, the platform gives you it quite concise, doesn't it, information of how you can solve these problems and obviously make a priority list of yeah. what to solve, is that um, right? Yeah, I'll just jump in there. So we have a dashboard yep. um, that gives you that, that kind of score. We have um, a risk score against okay. you know the various websites. Um, right. A big part of it is, from the external side, a, a big element of that is applications or websites. Um, and, and then for anyone listening for applications, that might be like a Facebook or a yeah. Google Drive. Or uh, I think or... I mentioned in, in a sort of previous discussion, right, and, and I always pick on marketing, so it might be an application that's external facing. It okay. may be a HR system. It may be... Okay. It, so if you think about a typical organisation, what are we exposing externally that perhaps needs to be tested or locked okay. down? in some way um, so every organization will have their own set of systems that they've yep. exposed to the outside world it may be starting with something like as simple as your website mm -hmm. but then there may be other things that hang off that it may be new systems new events wh whatever the case might be new applications that you're developing okay. um, and all of those things need to be tested yeah um, and what we found you know in terms of um, th those kind of organizations is that um, you just don't have the time to go through and check what everybody's doing across the business and what they're publishing. Mm. Um, but when you have this single pane of glass, you've got, okay, you know, we've, we've got, you know, this new HR system or we've right. got this new client customer facing application. Right. Has it been tested? You know, has it gone through the route of the security team or the IT team to um, validate it and, and, and do all the checks and balances and say, is this good to go? So it gives them that that visibility very quickly to to see what's out there. You know, what does it look like from a, from an attacker perspective from the outside world? And we feel we use Pentera internally, don't we? So it it works for multitude of si sizes of businesses and and yeah, ease of use. Just, just finishing off what Shaq was saying about the kind of the surface piece. Mm -hmm. I think the dashboard is kind of two pronged, and that there's a there's a detailed part of the dashboard that shows you really in detail what you need to know. But that front pane, front pane of glass, effectively, that we talked about, the attractiveness and things, also shows you your top-level risks. You know, and obviously, we've talked about Log4j, but, you know, for example, have you got ports that are open and used by malware, generally open ports? Have you got high vulnerabilities? That'll all kind of come in there as well. So before you start drilling into the detail of each asset and what the problems are, you can see very easily um, what's in there. But, no, you're absolutely right. I mean, we use Pentera internally. Um, obviously, it's part of our ISO accreditation that we use that as our pen testing internally um and yeah it's 
very good at finding those types of issues, especially because, you know, as a smaller organization, we've, we're not bad on patching. We're pretty good. You know, our patching levels are pretty good. But again, this is a good at pick because it doesn't just look at CVEs. It looks at other vulnerabilities on the network. You can really make those kind of lasting changes to your security posture. And I'm sure we talked about that a bit more in detail in the last podcast as well. Yeah. yeah. I'll just add to that in uh, um I, I always talk about discovery because I just think it's it's useful to know what's there. Um, but re- ultimately, what Pentera is doing is allowing you to test for for problems. So if we have, let's say, um, some sort of login page that's being exposed, you can now start to launch certain attacks. So just as we do internally, you can start to exploit these things. Um, and that takes it a step further, right? It's not just showing you what's there, but it's showing you now what would happen if we were to put some rogue input into a login Mm -hmm. box, right? Can we crash the application? Can we, not necessarily crash the application, but can we um, pull out data, valuable data, um, that allows us to to gain some sort of access as an attacker? Um, So these become all all important. And I should actually say that, you know, from a safety aspect, we do a lot of work to make sure that we're not bringing applications down or or causing issues. Yeah, that Um, came up with today, wasn't it? With uh, F&Qs that we've been filming is that, that is all of this safe? Because I think, I don't, Phil, do you get asked this? I think I've heard it a few times at the events, or this all sounds great, but will it take my, my network down? Does yeah. it have an impact on people working? And it doesn't, does it, Phil? It has no impact on that. No, it doesn't. And I think that, you know, going back to the days, I mean, again, I think I, as a cust- I was a customer of Pentera about six years ago, but going before that, we used to kind of pull a few open source tools, and we actually had problems um, with a couple of actual systems whereas we never had a problem with Pentera. Again, they, they check the exploits before they use them. There's a safety by design document that goes into the detail, but they're very conscious of that. And I guess that's one of the key things. You're getting the Pentera tools, you're getting everything that's checked, you're getting the latest updates, but you know that there's somebody at the back of that that's been working on it going, right, I've tested that, it's safe. Press the update button, get the latest vulnerabilities to scan for. You know, so it's, it's very much, it's, it's a big time saver to be able to test the latest things without having to worry about that side of things. So we've kind of talked about how the product has evolved. Yeah. Why is it looking at attack surface? And anyone listening, if attack surface isn't on their radar, because I appreciate not everyone has got it on their radar yet. Yeah. They're probably still trying to sort out what's going on inside, not even thought about outside yet. Yeah. Why should they be worried about attack surface? And, and how is it evolving? And, and what are you guys preparing yeah. for? Good, good question. I, I think people have always been... Um, aware of that perhaps on the outside but having the means or the resources um, is probably the the issue um, in that you've got to bring somebody in every once in a while to test it and you've got to define a scope on what they're going to test it's kind of out of your hands it's out of your control yeah so I think ultimately um, for us it's about that empowerment piece right letting people run those tests themselves um, to look at potentially what what we call OWASP top 10 right Mm -hmm. in terms of the typical type of security tests or vulnerabilities or issues that you look at um, from an application perspective and giving people that empowerment to be able to test for those kind of things um, on a regular basis, um, you know, becomes really, really, really useful. Um, in terms of the threat landscape, though, um, we know traditionally people do really a really good job of vulnerabilities, but yeah. they don't look at that whole holistic security piece in that, um, you know, has have we published something or opened a certain port inadvertently um, yesterday, although mm. um, you know the day, you know last week it was fine, it wasn't yeah. a problem. So it's again being able to sort of monitor those things. Um, I, I would say that generally, again, people do a really good job of the external facing. Um, okay. assets yeah, yeah. Um, because they probably are you know there's more exposure there's more you know right. it's in the public view so whatever anybody sees from the outside I think the the, the big problem is that um, sometimes we everybody doesn't have that visibility and it's not accessible to everybody mm-hmm. when we talk about different sizes of organizations mm-hmm. um, so for Pintera it's always about being able to to help those companies um, to do more um, and to be able to see more yeah. Um, and keep on top of it, ultimately. Okay. Um, just yeah. just to kind of add to that, Kelly, I mean, obviously the attack surface is ultimately how the attacker's going to get in. So yeah. that's that's kind of why you want to... So that's a given. Are we, is that a given then, that that's the way they're going to get in? You've got to think that way. Uh, I mean, it's I, one way, yeah. 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 I mean, they could get in through like a, a phishing email or different things as well, but you know, or, or inside a threat, for example. But, you know, externally, that's the, that's the route they're going to get in. And right. also, you know, you're talking about OS top 10. That is kind of effectively known as the most critical 
risks to your kind of web-based application. So again, that's Chuck says, that's the kind of the way to be testing those and making sure that you're not having any issues on those sides of things. But, you know, as with everything we always talk about, you know, there's it's a multi-pronged approach. And I think this is this addition to Pentera is just another string in the bow and another really good way of keeping yourself safe effectively. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so when we talk about somebody coming in from the outside, and I think in most people's minds, that's kind of the fear. Oh, how did they get into the network? And yes, it can happen. Yeah. Um, and there are attacks even going back to last year where people have you know breached the network from the outside. Um, and you, you know, we, we I think we, we were looking at movies earlier, right? Um, yes. And hacking, sort of uh, how hacking is portrayed. And I think generally the mindset is that that's how it happens. But as Phil rightly said, um, people can already be inside the network mm-hmm. because I've got a compromised device and mm-hmm. I plug it into my network. We're already inside the network. Yeah. Or um, somebody's clicked on something that they shouldn't have in a phishing email. Um, these are and, and it is. Again, looking at that sort of 360 degree view, right? And that's what we're really pushing to do at Pentera to be able to give people that that view inside the network and outside the network. So we're not going to make this go on too long because we've got anyone that hasn't listened to the original um, podcast that we did with you, Shaq. That goes into loads more detail, a little bit longer. This wanted to be a bit of a high level catch up. But before we go off, because I think... Pantera are doing some amazing things. You seem to be always evolving, which is very exciting. Yeah. What is the future of Pantera? What keeps, I mean, keeps you excited and working there? Uh, right? Yeah, and, and I think this is a question that you could ask anybody in cybersecurity. It's always interesting. It's always mm. exciting. There's always, from, from our perspective, you know, it's about helping organizations um, do a better job generally of you know what they're doing which is a really tough job it's a really hard job um, it's from our side um, we're continuing to look at um, attack vectors right interesting ways that we can help our customers to fix a problem yeah. um, around validating their security and that's what it goes back to so we've had a really aggressive roadmap over the last year and a half that I've been with Pentair we've done a, a lot we've done mm. huge amount, amounts of uh, work around building the reporting the remediation the types of attacks that we look at um, and that's just continuing to increase and I think just to sort of you know final point on that is uh, um, you know we've gone through our round c funding yeah uh, we now reach that unicorn status and that's really going to drive more investment in innovation um, in being able to sort of lead the pack as it were in in what we do and and how we help our customers and I think what's really good for me is to go back over the you know uh, over the last sort of 12 months or so and look at some of the conversations I've had with customers where I've then gone back in time and and talked to them about how they've used the platform and how they benefited and Mm. um they're kind of scratching the surface with some of the stuff that they're doing still. And they, you know, it's a really powerful platform yeah. in terms of what it allows them to do. Um, and the fact that we're just going to keep doing that and keep evolving. Um, I can't really talk about some of the roadmap stuff, but there are some no. really exciting things coming in, in the next quarter, in the next six months. And You can't and, officially and tell us, yeah. but I'm going to ask Phil, if you could see that roadmap of what things they're looking at doing, what would you be like? Oh, that's, that's good. That's genius. Um, I think it'd be nice to see some collaboration between the two products, the in- external and internal. I think that'd be pretty cool to see. Um, you know, if there's more things you could pass, and perhaps if they built in, if because they're, they're looking from externally, if they could build in and maybe a bit of phishing or a bit of other ways to sort of try and get credentials when you're running a scan. Um, that could be quite an interesting thing to do as well. Well, thank you for joining us, virtual head Phil, in a, a very nice guest guest podcast room today thank you Shaq for joining us as always hopefully we'll catch up with you in six months time with more exciting news from Pantera fantastic thank you cheers thanks Thanks, Phil thanks bye bye